Hi, this is Nicholas Bell with Ion Cinema here to review Betty Blue, which was released uh, on Criterion on November 19th. Uh, Betty Blue is, of course, one of the seminal films in the cinema du look film movement, uh, which was coined by the film critic Raphael Besson in 1989, referring to the films of Jean-Jacques Benex, Luc Besson, and Leos Carax, uh, categorized as uh, having narratives that are style over substance and spectacle over narrative, which might potentially be true. Thankfully, this is the uh, director's cut of the film, which is three hours, but next, uh, due to the disaster of his sophomore film, The Moon in the Gutter, at the 1982 Cannes Film Festival, uh, kind of, I, I think, was doubting himself and released a, a two-hour cut of Betty Blue originally, which was nominated for an Oscar for Best Foreign Language Film, uh, racked up nine Caesar Awards, winning for Best Poster, uh, and introduced the world to the uh, ineffable and uh, probably one of the best portraits of hysteria I've seen, uh, by courtesy of Beatrice Dahl. Um, in short, it's a love story that is about uh, a man pay played by Jean Hugh Ganglad, uh, who works as a handyman in a seaside resort and meets a girl who appears out of the blue, uh, who's basically a uh, a composite of a sex fantasy and they fall in love and end up going to Paris and then Marviol. Uh, meanwhile, he's ignoring all the red flags that she is suffering from what would probably be likely classified as or diagnosed as schizophrenia, uh, which ends very tragically. Um, the supporting cast includes Gerard Darman as Eddie, uh, Consuelo de Havilland as Betty's uh, friend Lisa, uh, Dominique Pignon shows up in a role, as does uh, Vincent Lindon. Uh, the, it was lensed by Jean-Francois Robin and Gabriel Yard uh, also provides a fantastic score. He, helped, he won an Oscar for The English Patient, I believe. Uh, the film, which is based on a novel by Philip Gion, uh, who also wrote O, which was turned into the film L by Paul Verhoeven, the film has been charged with uh, being superficial, I believe Roger Ebert didn't care for it, and being a rampant misogynistic portrait. Uh, however, Anglade and Dahl are both equally naked, although it's told from his perspective and it kind of insinuates that once she is no longer necessary, can no longer serve her purpose, has to die and he is elevated to his next sort of level in life. I do think it plays like the antithesis of old 1940s and 50s Hollywood studio women's pictures. Uh, I think there's an interesting comparison here to something like Now Voyager, which was also just put out on Criterion, the Betty Davis vehicle. Uh, Anglade reminds me very much of Paul Henreid, and he does, uh, he has a signature role, not unlike Henreid in Now Voyager with the cigarettes, where he makes uh, a drink out of a mixture with seltzer and uh, makes a big to-do with covering it with cloth and shaking it up so the foam fizzes and spits, and uh, which I take to read as a metaphor of their kind of tempestuous love. Uh, I think the three-hour running time is necessary. Uh, I think Dahl and Anglade have uh, wonderful chemistry, and I think this film would make a great double feature, albeit a long one, with Leos Carax's Lovers on the Bridge. Uh, to wrap up, uh, Criterion's release has a 2013 documentary about the making of the film. Uh, there's a 1977 short by Benex, uh, La Chien de Monsieur Michel, and there's a 1986 uh, French television interview with Benex and Dahl. I give the film 5 out of 5 stars, and uh, Criterion's disc release 4.5 out of 5. Thank you. Hey, this is Eric from MyOwnCinema.com. If you want to support us, subscribe below. For more reviews, interviews, film festival coverage from Sundance, Cannes, Toronto, you want to check out these guys on this side.